This is Taiwan Insider, a weekly news roundup brought to you by Radio Taiwan International. I'm Andrew Ryan. I'm Natalie So. Here's your week in a minute. Taipei Mayor Ko Wenzhe has announced that he's setting up a new political party, the Taiwanese People's Party, on August 6th. Many say it's a prelude to a presidential run next year. The KMT has officially named Kaohsiung Mayor Han Guoyu as its 2020 presidential candidate. After the announcement, Han gave a speech promising a better economy and peaceful cross-strait ties. China has stopped allowing its citizens to visit Taiwan independent of a tour group, saying that the move is due to the state of cross-strait ties. Taiwan's Mainland Affairs Council says the ban violates a cross-strait travel agreement. Hong Kong students in Kaohsiung have collected second-hand scooter helmets to send to protesters back home. The drive began after a recent mob attack at a Hong Kong subway station. Third grader Ding Xiehe won at the 2019 Japan International Mental Arithmetic and Mathematical Competition, solving 47 out of 50 problems in two minutes. And that's your Week in a Minute. Every week we each come up with a word of the week that we think describes this week. Andrew, are you ready to guess my word? Always is my favorite part. All right. All right, let's see what you have. Super supplies. Supper. Summer. No. Surprise! <laughs> Surplus? S surfing? <laughs> surfing? Surface. That's right. Surface. Okay, so the reason I chose this word is because we're seeing a new candidate begin to surface, a presidential candidate in Taipei Mayor Ko Wenzhe. He's announced he's going to set up a new party, a political party. Also, it's Ghost Month, and many believe that ghosts are surfacing from the underworld. We'll tell you more about that in today's show. That's a great word, Natalie. Thanks. I like that a lot. Are you ready for my word? Yes, I am. All righty. Let's see what I have. B. Boo. No. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Beware. Beehive. No. Be <laughs> behave. Yes. Uh -huh. I chose behave. This is not a comment on anything related to politics, I promise. Okay. It has nothing to do with our political stories. This has everything to do with, as you mentioned, Ghost Month. And we often are really afraid our equipment is not going to behave. So a lot of people actually in the TV industry, I'm going to put this down so I can show you, they will buy this. So it's a little snack food, and because the name is Guai Guai, so it sounds like behave. It sounds like you're telling uh -huh. your equipment to Good behave. Good boy. Good girl. That's right. So you actually place it on Good top camera. of your camera, your computer, to make sure that everything runs smoothly. Oh, that's why they do it. Guai yeah. Guai. I get it. And you need the, the color green because that means go, red means stop. So you, you have to be careful about what color you choose They're as well. afraid that ghosts are going to do something with the equipment? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So people will actually specifically buy these even um, year round, but especially this month. So uh, we're going to keep this uh, close by hand. So I'm just going to toss this off to you. All righty. <laughs> Put okay. that where it needs to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, also in today's show, former U.S. National Security Advisor Steve Yates is going to tell us what he thinks the U.S would like to see in a presidential candidate in Taiwan. Also bats, they could be helping us deal with dengue fever. Cool. Also, plus, do you know where this is? Wow, this beautiful. Is a, it's a beautiful photo. It's a photo of one of Taiwan's offshore islands. It's named for an animal that it resembles, but in recent days, it's undergone some slight changes to its shape. All right, so what happened to it and where in Taiwan is it? We'll let you know at the end of today's show. We now turn to our top story. Taipei Mayor Ken Wenzhe is going to set up a new political party, the Taiwanese People's Party. He made the announcement on Thursday. Ken met with the press to announce his new party. It's named after Taiwan's first political party, which was set up in 1927 during Japanese rule. Ke shares a birthday with the person who founded the original party, Zhang Weishui, and he's planning to establish the party on their birthday, August 6. Now, many believe this means Ke will run for president, although he has not announced that yet. Presidential candidates have to register by September 17th. Ke is hoping his party can win 10 legislative seats in the elections in January. Now, some people are saying that he might team up with Foxconn founder Terry Guo in the elections. 
Uh, if they do team up and enter the race, that would be a huge challenge for President Tsai Ing-wen in her run to be re-elected, and also for the KMT's Han Guoyu. And this week, Han Guoyu was officially nominated as the presidential candidate for the Kuomintang. Let's take a look at what he said at the party congress. These are Han fans, or fans of Gaozhou Mayor Han Guoyu. Many of them have shown fanatical support for the new political star, creating a hand wave that has enabled him to become the presidential candidate for one of Taiwan's biggest parties, the Kuomintang. At the KMT's National Congress on Sunday, Han is dressed in his usual blue button-down shirt. He bows to the crowd and thanks them. Han presents himself as a man of the people, and that's integral to his charisma. Han shakes hands with KMT chairperson Wu Dun Yi and bows. Physical gestures of humility. He often mentions the time he was unemployed for 17 years. His story and style sets him apart from the political elite, which his followers are tired of. At the party's National Congress, Han speaks about his vision for Taiwan. This is a sacred presidential election. It's not just for a personal victory for Han Guoyu, and it's not just for our Kuomintang. It's for our country, the Republic of China. We need to wholeheartedly create a safe Taiwan where the people are rich, a Taiwan miracle, an economic miracle. Han is a charismatic speaker. He was elected in Kaohsiung on a promise that he'd make people rich. Now his presidential campaign is starting with the same theme. His reference to safety is an attempt to ease fears about the threat of China. Han also has many supporters overseas. He urged them to call or write to their political leaders so that other countries may know about Taiwan's situation. Han is working to mobilize his fans and unite the KMT. Former President Ma ying attended the party congress, as did primary contenders Eric Chu and Wang Jingping. But his main rival, Foxconn founder Terry Goh, was not there. Now, with the election season underway here in Taiwan, many people are watching China to see if they will do anything that will impact the elections here in Taiwan. Now, just this past week, they announced that they're going to stop allowing individual Chinese tourists to visit Taiwan separate from tour groups. As of August 1st, Chinese tourists must be part of a tour group if they want to travel to Taiwan. Beijing says this is due to current cross-strait relations. China has already reduced Chinese tourist visits to Taiwan since President Tsai came to office in 2016. Before the latest ban, there were slightly more people coming as individual tourists than as part of a group, so there could be a slight economic impact. Now, there are two takeaways as I see it. I think the first thing is, is that the political impact could actually be much larger than the economic impact. China is trying to show that they're, they're against President Tsai, right? That's right. And I think the second thing is, is that um, I think uh, this reduces the ability for people in China and people in Taiwan to interact naturally as they could as, you know, coming here as uh, separate from a tour group. That's true. Well, you know, China has been giving President Tsai a hard time during her term in office. But the U.S., on the other hand, has shown much support. Could the two superpowers be taking sides in Taiwan's elections? Well, I asked former U.S. National Security Advisor Steve Yates about this. He gives us his perspective on what kind of candidate the U.S. would prefer to win Taiwan's election. Now, Yates is a strong supporter of Taiwan, and he's the CEO of a political risk consultancy called DC International Advisory. Let's have a look at this interview. Well, do you think that, you know, since President Tsai is uh, close to the U.S., mm -hmm. and um, the other candidate from the KMT is seen to be close to China, mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, China, pro-China media gives them lots of coverage, do you think that um, the U.S. would prefer a candidate like Tsai that's closer to the U.S. than China? Well, I don't think there's any question that if the U.S. government is looking at its own interests, if, if the description is accurate, that you've got a choice of a candidate that is leaning more China and sort of skeptical of the U.S., or a candidate that is more leaning more towards the U.S. and skeptical of China, it's in the American interest to support the candidate that wants to be our best friend. Uh, now, I, I have my own personal priorities that I try to uh, advocate to our government and, and people who deal with Taiwan. I say, look, I don't, I'm, I'm less interested in which political party is putting forward the candidates uh, or who the candidates are, but I care a great deal 
that the candidates understand the nature of the Chinese Communist Party, and they need to be fan gong. They need to be against communism. Uh, they need to want to be America's best friend, and then they should be advocating kind of uh, a Trump-like Taiwan first kind of approach to making sure that they're taking care of their own people, bringing opportunity back to Taiwan. And if they have that mindset, that will work very, very well with what our government is trying to accomplish. And I think that would be another period of growth. And so if the DPP candidate, the KMT candidate, or independent candidates can meet those three conditions, I think the U.S. is happy with any of them. But if there are candidates that really steer in the wrong direction on any one of those three areas, well, then I think we start to have questions about, is it really good for us? But what can the U.S. do? All it can do is maybe say some things, maybe grant some meetings, but our influence on the outcome here, I think, is less uh, decisive than people might imagine. I mean, there's an awful lot of voters that go to the polls, and they don't ask Uncle Sam first, what should I do? Now we'll have the full interview available for you on the Taiwan Today playlist on our YouTube channel. Now on to what else is new this month. It's Ghost Month mm -hmm. beginning today, August 1st. Now, Andrew, do you do anything to observe Ghost Month except eating guai guai? <laughs> <laughs> and Ali, I don't eat them. I put them in important places. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Actually, no. What about you? I don't either. I mean, oh. I... I believe there are ghosts, but I don't believe they have power over us. I okay. believe in the spiritual world. I like that. Yeah. I like that. So I'm not too, <laughs> too freaked out. Okay. But a lot of people actually do observe Ghost Month and we'll be telling you about that. What Ghost Month is and how it affects people in Taiwan on today's Taiwan Explained. Today on Taiwan Explained, I'm going to tell you what Ghost Month is and how it affects people in Taiwan. All right, Nellie, we have 60 seconds on the clock. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Go. Many Taiwanese believe that on the first day of the seventh lunar month, the gates of hell open, bring hungry ghosts to roam the earth. They look for food, fun, and even souls. These are ghosts who did not receive a proper burial or who have been neglected by their family, so they're hungry. On the 15th, companies offer food and joss paper to appease the good brothers. People call them good brothers to not offend them. There are also many taboos such as do not go swimming and don't get married or buy a home. These moves could be dangerous. But if you don't believe in ghosts, you could get a good deal this month. There are also many festivals. The most elaborate is in Jilong on the 14th where water lanterns invite spirits to come on land to feast. And the month ends in Ilan with a ghost grappling festival where people race up greasy poles to catch food and a flag. That's how they feed and send off lingering ghosts in peace. Perfect. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Natalie. And that's today's Taiwan Explained. Up next, Taiwan by Number. Each week, we share with you a facet of life from Taiwan by way of some numbers. Now, this week, Natalie, we're going to be talking about bats. Great. That's right. These are, of course, the flying bats, not baseball bats, and you'll see why in just a second. Now, recently, the southern city of Kaohsiung has been fighting an outbreak of dengue fever, uh, which is a disease, a very serious disease, which is transmitted by mosquitoes. And of course, they're fumigating the city, but they're also coming up with some natural ways to get rid of mosquitoes. And so one of those ways is to use bats. Again, that's cool. not baseball bats. <laughs> those, <laughs> those don't work on mosquitoes. So my question for you is, uh, a very popular bat is called the East Asian bat. How many mosquitoes does the East Asian bat need to eat in one night in order to feel full? Hmm, a thousand. A thousand, okay. <laughs> Wouldn't that be very, nice if they got good rid of guess. a thousand? <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna have a look at this report for that answer. Taiwan is home to dozens of species of bats. You won't just find them in the wild, people raise them too. <laughs> These flat boxes are actually homes for bats, and the reason why people are raising them is so they'll eat the mosquitoes. Ever since they've been here, there have been fewer mosquitoes. 
The Bat Association of Taiwan says that bats hunt for food at the same time that the vector mosquitoes for dengue fever come out. There's a spike in people getting bitten by Asian tiger mosquitoes between 5 and 8 p.m. And the first peak in activity for East Asian bats is between 6 to 8 p.m. They have to eat about 1,200 mosquitoes every night. That's what prompted longtime conservationist NPP lawmaker Lin Yukai to visit schools, teaching kids about the role bats play in epidemic prevention and showing them how to make bat houses. Balconies and outdoor walkways are best, and they should be about two meters above the ground. They need good ventilation and sunlight for about 40 to 50 percent of the day. In the U.S., they've used bats to help stop the spread of the Zika virus. Lin says that in Kaohsiung, raising bats can reduce the need for fumigation, which will not only save money, it will also reduce the possibility that mosquitoes will become resistant. Okay, so very interesting, huh? Mm -hmm. Now, before the report, I asked you if you knew how many mosquitoes an East Asian bat has to eat in one night in order to feel full. You said a thousand. It's a big number. Let's have a look at the answer. Oh, wow. They need more than a thousand. That's right. They can eat that many. That's awesome. Isn't that amazing? That is so cool. So actually, you know, because I thought this was so cool and so such a great way to get rid of mosquitoes, I started to dig in deeper and do some more research on bats in Taiwan. I found some fascinating statistics and some very cute pictures. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. So first of all, Taiwan has 80 different types of land mammals. 80 okay. different types of land mammals. Of those 80 types of land mammals, how many of those species are species of bat? 20. 20. Okay. No, I sure. think that's too many. 10. 10? Yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Okay, that's it. <laughs> okay, 10. So have a look at the answer. Oh, I was closer the first time. 35. So actually, Not many. that's almost many. half of all of the land mammals what? in Taiwan. Taiwan actually has a very high diversity of bats. That's cool. Yes, and that picture that you saw there, very cute, huh? Mm -hmm. That is actually a Formosan golden bat. So I want to ask you a couple questions about that. All right. First of all, do you want to see a Formosan golden bat laughing? Sure. All right, have a look at this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't know they're laughing. He might not be laughing, but I but thought I'd like say that. He looks like he's laughing. Yeah. <laughs> it's much better than if you imagine him being very angry, right? Right, right. With those teeth. Sinister. <laughs> so that actually, these uh, golden Formosan bats, they're actually very small. I'm sorry, Formosan golden bats are very small. The males are about six centimeters long. Oh my gosh, that's They will really only weigh tiny. about 14 and a half grams. So my question for you is, if they're six centimeters long, how long is the wingspan of the Formosan golden bat? Um, 20 centimeters. 20 centimeters? Mm -hmm. All right, let's have a look at the answer. Oh, wow. 32 so centimeters. Yes. That's five times their their length, right? That at least, uh, it's more cool. than five times yeah. their length. Yeah, it's amazing, right? That's Little great. tiny guy, but... That's moves. how they get around well, huh? Absolutely. They move very fast. They're going to catch those mosquitoes, right? Right. They, they have to be, be faster, faster than, than us. Yeah. And those mosquitoes, too. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right. So in many countries, bats are seen as kind of like evil spirits or omens, bad omens. And I thought, oh, this is great. You know, this is perfect time to do it, Ghost Month. But actually, it turns out here in Taiwan and in China, bats are very auspicious. Really? Yes. And that is because the name bat, bian fu, the fu sounds like fu qi de fu, uh -huh. which is good like fortune. That. Yeah, in Mandarin Chinese. Interesting. So my question for you is, what number is most commonly associated with lucky bats? Eight. Eight? Eight's a lucky number, right? Yeah. Uh, fa sounds like uh, good Fog fortune as well. Fu. Well, let's have a look at the answer. So Ooh. you can see on this Qing Dynasty five? snuff bottle, you can count the five bats. You can see them in a circle around that. Oh. What looks like a long life symbol there. So why is it five? I, mean, I didn't know five was a lucky number. Excellent question. Uh, it is because Wu Fu, the five uh, good blessings. Oh. Uh, these are actually things like health, uh, good wealth. I'm going to have to look at the answer because I can't memorize it. <laughs> Longevity, which is what you saw in the middle of that snuff bottle there. Also, love of virtue. And this is a strange one, a peaceful ending. 
So it's sort of like life should come to a peaceful ending, not a like very uh, quick that's what ending. I, I think is better than yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we all <laughs> a peaceful agree with that. Ending. <laughs> yes, we're happy with the five blessings. <laughs> so that's uh, that's what bats are that's known for. That's fascinating. Yeah. I love this positive image of bats we have here in Taiwan. Yeah, absolutely. And I hope they do help us get rid of some mosquitoes, maybe a thousand a day or a few more than that. That would be great. <laughs> Wouldn't that be yes, great? Yes, please. <laughs> so, um, well, join us for our next segment, and we're going to take a look at what's happening on social media on Hashtag Taiwan. This week on Hashtag Taiwan, RTI social media guru Leslie Liao tells us what's trending in Taiwan. Hey, Leslie. Hey, Let's Leslie. Go, guys. What do you have for us this week? All right, so this week we're going to be talking about Taiwanese-American basketball star Jeremy Lin. Now, Jeremy Lin likes to come to Taiwan after the NBA regular season to put on basketball camps and get in touch with his roots. Um, what you may or may not know is that Jeremy Lin is also a devout Christian, and this time he gave a sermon at a church in New Taipei City. Now, some of the comments he made during the sermon turned a couple of heads. What were those comments? Well, I'll have them for you right here. He said, rock bottom seems to be getting more and more rock bottom for me. Mm. I feel like in some ways the NBA's kind of given up on me. Oh, Aww. that's really sad. So like I said, these comments drew a lot of attention, and a lot of people are saying a lot of things online. Let's look at some tweets. First, we have NBA player Trey Young. He says, me having Jeremy Lin as one of my vets, I'll tell you, I'll always be a fan of him. Dude can hoop, hoop, but he's <laughs> never selfish. It's always about others and the team first. Oh, that's great. The real ones know, bro, I'll always have your back. You are not done yet. Mm. Hashtag Linsanity. Now, it's not just current NBA players that have Jeremy Lin's back. Uh, one veteran, Dominique Wilkins, says, Man, I'm here for you, my man Jeremy Lin. Anything you need, hit me up. Mm. And I think it's also important to note that both Trey Young and Dominique Wilkins were part of the Atlanta Hawks team, which is the same basketball organization that Jeremy Lin played for before he went to the Toronto Raptors and won a championship earlier this year. Not a lot of people are able to sympathize with a big uh, basketball star like Jeremy Lin, but the sports industry, for the most part, had his back. Freelance sports writer Chris Walder writes, Jeremy Lin is an NBA champion. Jeremy Lin attended Harvard. Jeremy Lin has made a lot of money. Jeremy Lin is also allowed to be upset and or depressed, sans judgment. That's true. Yes. He's human. That's right. Now, a lot of Jeremy Lin's fans also uh, went to social media upon hearing these comments to comfort him. But I found one comment that really broke it down uh, big time. Mandy Xiao says, don't forget that the NBA is an organization that values business opportunities. The NBA's market isn't limited to the United States. Asia is a very big market as well. That's a really good point. That's right. true. Yeah. And if you're interested in seeing the sermon, uh, the full thing is online. It's on Jeremy Lin's Facebook page, and we'll also have the link to it down below. Cool. Well, you know, I think it was really brave of him to be so honest with how down he was feeling mm. in public. I mean, I think he's trying to be genuine and humble and not complaining like yeah. some people bragged up, you know about him well i think that you know the nba is such a culture of like you know trying to be like tough guy right and really kind of building yourself up and that's yeah. what helps you win games too but i think for him authenticity and the story yeah. you know even if you know eventually someday he's not gonna be able to play those will actually go with him through his whole life and i think that's great well, you know, Jeremy Lin's entry into the NBA itself was just so groundbreaking. That's Broke true. a lot of records. For mm -hmm. Asian Americans, I mean, it's very inspiring. Very and I think so. he's a great role model for young men. Yeah. So, and he, you know, he also said that perhaps he may come to Taiwan. He'd love to come to Taiwan to play uh, with his brother. would like to come on our show, we'd love to interview That's you. That's <laughs> right. We'd love to interview you. We hope you come to Taiwan um, to play. That would be cool. Whatever you do, I'm sure, Jeremy Lin, if you're watching, it'll be great. Um, but thanks for uh, joining us on Hashtag Taiwan. Do leave a comment below. We would love to hear from you. And finally today, we're in Taiwan. Now at the top of our show, we showed you a picture and asked if you knew where it was. Let's have one more look at that photo. We said this is a photo of one of Taiwan's offshore islands. It's named for an animal that it resembles, but in recent days, it's undergone some slight changes to its shape. Where in Taiwan is us? Well, let's take a look at this video. When a group of tourists sailed by Guishan Island last week, they witnessed something quite unusual. Parts of the island's cliff buckled, triggering a landslide. Scientists say it was a natural erosion caused by heavy rain and a lack of vegetation. But even though it's missing a little chunk, 
That doesn't diminish the island's charm. The name Gui San means Turtle Mountain in Chinese because the volcanic island is shaped like a giant turtle. Over the years, countless visitors and photographers have flocked to the island off the northeastern county of Yilan to take in the gorgeous scenery. It's even been immortalized in this painting by the renowned Taiwanese painter Li Mei Su. Wow, it's really a beautiful place, isn't it's it? It's beautiful. Yeah. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's edition of Taiwan Insider. Be sure to leave a comment below and connect with us on social media. Also, check out our show notes for links to today's topics. For Taiwan Insider, I am Natalie So, and I'm Andrew Ryan. See you next week.